Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Yi Chiu. I am an application specialist of ICERA Medical. And I would like to welcome you to this webinar on imaging activatable probes for liver injury and tumor metastasis using MSOT. Now, without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to the speaker, Professor Shui Zhu Wu. Professor Wu received her PhD in polymer science from South China University of Technology in 1997. She is now professor of material science at State Key Laboratory of Luminescent Materials and Devices at College of Material Science and Engineering of South China University of Technology. Her research activities include design and synthesis of fluorescent compounds and polymers, photophysical systems, biomaterials, as well as polymer and nanoparticle-based fluorescent sensing and imaging systems. During her career, she has been awarded the National Science Fund for Distinguished Young Scholars and has been appointed as Distinguished Professor of Guangdong Province. She has published more than 130 articles in peer-reviewed journals. So now I will hand over to the speaker, the Professor Wu, please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Chu, for the invitation and the nice introduction. And today I will talk about our recent work involving active, activatable optoacoustic probes for MZOT imaging. I will begin with a brief introduction to optoacoustic imaging, also known as photoacoustic imaging. Optoacoustic imaging is actually a hybrid imaging method for biological applications based on the photoacoustic effect. As shown in this figure on the left-hand side, the pulses are delivered into biological tissues, and some of this energy will be absorbed and converted into heat, which will result in thermal expansion of tissues and, accordingly, and, and, and the according generation of ultrasound signals. The generated ultrasound signals can be detected and analyzed for photoacoustic imaging. And optoacoustic imaging have, has many beneficial features in terms of practical applications. For example, in vivo imaging of tissue to several centimeters in depth in real time and with a resolution down to 150 micrometers can be achieved as a result of the less tissue scattering. And it, it's capable of imaging both endogenous substances such as hemoglobin and melanin, as well as exogenous agents, such as noble metals, carbon materials, and organic dyes. And what's more important is that it holds great potential for real-time non-invasive di diagnosis of numerous diseases. In particular, multispectral optoacoustic tomography, tomography, MZOT, is a robust optical imaging te technology based on optoacoustic principle. It can provide images with multiple parameters, including the three geometrical dimensions, the time and illumination wavelengths. As shown in this figure here, the test animal, such as a, my, a mouse, can be placed inside this chamber, and the animal is illuminated with short near-infrared light pulses at different wavelengths by a tunable laser via fiber optic. And then the generated ultrasound signals uh, are, detect are collected by the transducer array located on the wall of this chamber. A ring with illumination and detection elements move along the axis so that whole body imaging can be achieved. And we, we are particularly interested in adopting MZOT imaging because this method has many beneficial features. For example, illumination and data acquisition at multiple wavelengths and subsequent multispectral analysis can allow us to discriminate the ultrasound signals of a specific contrast agent 
from the background, background signals of the tissue intrinsic, intrinsic contrasts, such as hemoglobin, melanin, and et cetera. In addition, three-dimensional MZO images can be obtained by volumetric imaging technique or by rendering stacks of cross-sectional 2D images as 3D images. And in optoacoustic imaging, activatable contrast agents have advantageous features since it can respond to specific biological stimuli by changing their absorption property significantly and generating strong optoacoustic signals. And high sensitivity detection can be achieved and also real-time tracking of dynamic processes can be realized. And therefore, by using MZOT imaging, we can accurately locate and determine the, the position of the disease and the volume of the disease foci. Next, I will talk about two of our recent work involving development of activatable probes for disease diagnosis using MZOT. The first, in the first work, the activatable MZOT signals is, re, uh, is uh, is generated as a result of cha the change in electronic state in donor acceptor type chromophore. And in the second work, the activatable MZO signals uh, actually results from the change in aggregation state of the chromophore. In our first work, we designed activatable probes for imaging liver injury and metastatic tumors. In this work, two DA type chromophores were designed and synthesized. And in these two uh, probes, we used testing as the donor and the rec recognition moyalty for the, biomark for the biomarkers were, intro uh, were introduced onto the donor part. And the probe one is designed for imaging liver injury via detecting alkaline phosphatase, ALP, and probe two is for imaging metastatic tumors while detecting beta galactosidase, GAL. As for probe one, to ensure liver targeting capability, we also uh, use a amphiphilic polymer to enca encapsulate probe one molecules so that we obtained the nano probe, uh, the nano probe for imaging liver injury. The detailed spectral response of probe one towards ALP are presented in this slide here. It can be seen that in the absence of the enzyme, probe one exhibits strong absorption from 550 nanometers to 650 nanometers, as well as very weak fluorescence at 712 nanometers. While Upon addition of the enzyme, and as the enzyme level is increased, the absorption redshifts and increases at around 684 nanometers. Correspondingly, the optoacoustic opto signal at around 684 nanometers gradually enhances. So does the fluorescence emission at 712 nanometers. These spectral changes are caused by the ALP-mediated structural transformation, and PRO1 shows high selectivity towards ALP. Following the experimental protocol, the response of probe 2 towards GAL was also investigated, and it's clear that probe 2 also exhibits remarkable redshift in absorption as well as prominent fluorescence enhancement upon incubation with the enzyme GAL. These spectral results clearly indicate that the two probes can be potentially employed to image the corresponding biomarkers in both optoacoustic and fluorescent manners. Then we use a commonly used clinical drug and acetylparaaminophenol APAP to induce liver injury in mice. And the figure on the top left-hand side shows 
the cross-sectional images of the mice. The upper panel represents the images of the active, activated probe one, uh, while the lower panel represents the overlay of the signal of the, of the activated probe one with a single wavelength image as an anatomical reference. In these figures, number one represents the spinal cord, two represents aorta, and three represents the liver. It can be seen from these images. For mice treated with APAP, uh, the, the MZOR signal gradually increased within 30 minutes. And by referring to a cryosection image of the mice, it's clear the signal is in the liver region. And then MIP images were obtained through Z-STAG rendering. In these MIP images, the overall picture reflecting the injured liver is clearly visualized. And one can find that the, the volume of the injured liver is quite large. Then the mice were treated with different doses of APAP. Higher do APAP dose causes, causes more severe liver damage and therefore stronger MZOR signal in the liver region. Fluorescent imaging for the mice provides additional evidence that the increase in optoacoustic signal is due to the rise of haptic alkaline phosphatase activity. To verify the relationship between APAP treatment and liver injury, we also measure the activity of serum enzyme biomarkers by using ELISA kits. And the data here the data here proves that APAP treatment uh, proves that there is direct between liver dysfunction and APAP treatment. Then next, uh, then probe one was used to track the rehabilitation of liver injury during therapeutic process. During the treatment, the optoacoustic signal gradually decreases in the liver region. And after six days, almost no optoacoustic, optoacoustic signal could be observed. In addition, the MIP, uh, from the MIP images of the mice, we can observe the overall liver injury status during its rehabilitation process. And the fluorescent imaging of the rehabilitating mice gives similar results. Uh, now let's turn, uh, let's turn to probe two. We used probe two to, uh, for imaging and locating metastatic tumors in abdominal cavity of the mice. To mimic uh, met, met, uh, tumor metastasis in, in abdominal cavity, cancer cells were intraperitoneally injected into the mice. It can be seen from these uh, images on the top left-hand side, at th uh, after th uh, three weeks after the cancer cell injection, two, sp two small spots of MZOR signals can be observed, while after uh, six weeks, more and larger spots can be visualized, indicating the gradual propagation of the metastasized cancer in abdominal cavity. After the mice were sacrificed, and dissected the tumors in the abdominal cavity observed fluorescently or by naked eyes. And the locations of these tumors are in good conformity with the corresponding z stack MIP images. This result, and, and more importantly, the MIP images at each time point are a three-view diagram and one can accurately pinpoint the location of the metastasized tumors in abdominal cavity of the mice from these images. Uh, later, we, uh, and then we used probe two to detect lymph lymphatic metastasis in mice in models. To establish lymphatic um, metastasis models in, in mouse, we first 
uh, injected cancer cells into the foot pad of the mouse, as can be seen from these MIP images. By employing the 3D MZOT images together with the activatable probe tool, we can map the whole metastas uh, metastatic loot from the primary tumor to the sentinel lymph node. And number one here represents the foot pad, and number uh, three represents the lymph node at a popliteal position. And two, number two represents the lymphatic vessel. And fluorescent imaging of the mice also supports the, our MZO results. And after, from, uh, from the images of the euthanized mice, and we can see that there is a dark color hard lump at the lymph node at the popliteal position, uh, indicating that the tumor has spread to the popliteal position in the mice. Next, I will talk about uh, the, our second work. In this work, we designed a nano probe for diagnosing and mapping of the topic bladder tumor, a metastatic tumor, by using the change in aggregation state of the chromophore. The nano probe is actually formed by a positively charged chromophore. TCHM with a negatively charged polymer, hyaluronin, through chromic interaction. In the, in the nanoprobe, TCHM are in the aggregate state. And overexpressed hyaluronic days in tumor cells can specifically degrade hyaluronin and therefore disaggregate TCHM molecules. By this way, the absorption at 882 nanometers for TCHM chromophore enhances and correspondingly generates strong optoacoustic signals. Another advantage for using hyaluronin as the substrate for the nanoprobe is that hyaluronin can selectively bind with CD44, which is overexpressed on the cancer cell surface. Therefore, the nanoprobe can be efficiently uptaken by cancer cells via CD44 mediated endocytosis. And in this slide here, the absorption spectra of the nanoprobe and the spectral properties are presented as shown in this, uh, this slide here in, in the aggregation state, the, the chromophore displays a broad but much lower absorption from around 650 nanometers to 900 nanometers in the absence of the enzyme hyaluronidase. While in the, in the presence of hyaluronidase and as the enzyme level is increased, the nanoprobe's absorption at 882 nanometers steadily increases and that at 675 nanometers decreases. And the, and the optoacoustic signal also exhibits the maximum at around 880 nanometers. And the pro nanoprobe shows quite highly, uh, is highly selective towards hyaluronidase. Then we first use a subcutaneous tumor model to test the imaging capability of the nanoprobe. It can be seen from the image on the top left hand side here. Prominent ENZO signal can be observed in the tumor region on the back of the mice, which indicates that the nanoprobe can be utilized to image the overexpressed hyaluronic days level in xenograft tumor. Then we established an orthotopic bladder tumor mouse model as shown here in the uh, bottom left hand side the, from the cross-sectional images it can be seen that uh, 10 days after cancer cell injections obvious MZO signal at a lower part of the cross-section can be observed uh, to and by referring to the cryo section of the mice of the mouse 
clearly Amazon signal is a bladder. To further confirm that the Amazon signal is a bladder, we use a clinical contrast agent and inject injected the contrast agent into the bladder of a healthy mouse. And the two images at the bottom right hand side match match very well. This, for, this result indicate that the nanoprobe can uh, this further confirm that the Amazon signal is indeed a bladder region. And these results prove that the nanoprobe can be utilized to image the overexpressed hyaluronidase level in orthotopic broad, uh, bladder tumor. And in this slide here, the 3D MIP MDRO images really shows, show the location of the bladder tumor. And upon the mice being sacrificed and dissected, it can be seen that the bladder of the healthy, healthy mouse is transparent without any solid lesions, while in the blood uh, in the bladder of the tumor bearing mouse, an obvious solid lesion and some nodules can be clearly observed, as indicated by the dotted circle and the arrows. In addition, immune immune immunofluorescence images of the bladder tissues stand with CD44 antibody also support our MDOR imaging results. And these results further confirm that MDOR can be utilized to locate tumors in vivo. After that, we also used the nanoprobe to detect lymph lymphatic metastasis of the tumor. Uh, this slide here shows the cross-sectional images. And number one represents the tailbone, and number two represents the pores of the mouth, and number three represents artery, and number four represents the uh, leg, leg, the leg of the mouth. And it can be seen that here, in, and it's clear that at day 10, after the injection of cancer cells, the cross section at the footpath shows obvious MZO signal indicating the formation of the primary tumor at the foot pad of the mouse. Well, at day 21, MZO signal can be observed at a popliteal position, which strongly suggests that the tumor has spread to the lymph node from the primary tumor. And the 3D images in this slide here, clearly display the locations of the primary tumor at the foot pad, the metastasized lymph node at the popliteal position, as well as the lymphatic vessel in between. Therefore, the 3D MZO images can be employed to map the whole picture of the lymphatic metastasis route from primary tumor to sentinel lymph node. Well, I will wrap up my talk with a brief summary. The activatable optoacoustic imaging relies on a sub substantial change in the absorption band of the probes, and the ultrasound waves scatter less than the photons. Therefore, they can maintain resolution and determine orange of signals at depth. And the Z-Stack MIP images derived from multiple cross-sectional signals can be utilized to precisely locate the disease foci, which is more advantageous than the projection-based planar images obtained from fluorescence imaging. And our studies demonstrated great potential of MZOT for accurately visualizing the location, dynamics, and rehabilitation of diseases with the help of activatable contrast agents. And finally, I would like to thank iThera Medical for its kind and continued technical support. Now back to you, Dr. Chu. Thank you, Dr. Wu. Thanks for the uh, interesting talk. 
So uh, for the audience, as mentioned, you can type in your questions in the question box of the webinar software. So I've got a few questions already, so we'll go ahead with those. And in the meantime, please feel free to send additional questions. Okay, the first, first question is, uh, is it possible to use any activatable fluorescent probe for MSOT imaging? Uh, no. The absorption wavelength is very important in MSOR imaging. Usually, the activatable probes should have absorption band in the near infrared region for this technique. Thank you for the answer. Uh, the second question is, does your ALP probe also pick up bone ALP signal? Oh, this is a very good question. Actually, the probe can respond to ALP from anywhere. But in our work, we use, we use the probe. Our, the probe, our probe actually reached the liver region and respond to the haptic ALP level in situ. So we actually collect the benzo signals from the liver region in real time. Okay, thank you for the answer. How much overexpression do you need to distinguish between endogenous enzyme activities of ALP and also uh, the other HA uh, ACE from your second uh, study? So how much uh, overexpression do you need to distinguish between endogenous and uh, uh, overexpression from either liver uh, injury or from tumor? Oh yeah, this, this is also a very important question. It depends on the sensitivity of the probe. And in our case, in, in our case, in this case, uh, probe one is, is quite sensitive. Generally speaking, uh, several folds of overexpression is enough. Okay, thank you for your answer. Um, one uh, next question is, could you please explain in some more details how does the galactosidase sensing probe work? Oh, yeah. Uh, please wait. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, uh, from this slide, we can see that probe two on the top left hand side get uh, the recognition moiety is introduced onto the donor, onto the donor part. And when galatoxidase cleave will cleave the recognition moiety and therefore activate probe two. And from the absorption spectra on the bottom left hand side here, we can see that when the probe two was activated, it, it, it undergoes structural transformation. R2, R2, uh, sub, uh, when the recognition moiety was cleaved from probe two, it the probe two transforms to a hydroxy-containing molecule. By this way, the absorption redshifts and accordingly generates strong optoacoustic signal at around 703 nanometers. And by detecting this optoacoustic signal, we can detect the, uh, the enzyme GAL level. Thank you for the answer. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, so the question is, what are the advantages of this activatable probe for assessing APAP-induced liver injury over ICG? Okay. Well, first, I think MZO imaging technique has beneficial features. Um, for example, uh, it can illumination and data acquisition, as I have mentioned before, illumination and data acquisition at multiple wavelengths and subsequent multispectral analysis 
can allow us to discriminate the ultrasound signals of our probe from the background, background signals of the tissue intrinsic contrast, contrast such as hemoglobin, melanin, and etc. And in addition, three-dimensional MDO images can be obtained by volumetric imaging technique or by rendering stacks of cross-sectional 2D images as 3D images. And by this way, the, is, the, the accurate locations and volume of the disease foresight, in this case is liver injury, can be determined. The, I, on, on the other hand, by using the activatable by using the activatable probe, in our case is probe one, the probe can resp respond specifically to ALP by changing its absorption property significantly and accordingly generate strong optoacoustic signals. And therefore, high sensitivity detection and real-time tracking of the, of the liver injury can be realized. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor Wu. So I've got a couple of more questions, but uh, for the time being, I think we have time for one more. So uh, this, the last question is, can you detect any other types of liver injury with MSOT, for example, fibrosis or stenosis? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's highly possible. And but you have, but you will have to design the suitable probes, appropriate probes. For example, by introducing a specific recognition moiety for a specific biomarker, and it's possible since MZO imaging is a very promising technology. Okay, thanks Thank a lot, Professor Wu, again for your interesting talk and uh, for answering the questions. And also thanks to the audience for attending. So um, as mentioned before, if you have follow-up questions, please feel free to contact us and we will address them offline. Uh, thank you all and I wish you a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.